Okay, in this section, we're going to take a look at the graphs of sine and cosine. So the graphs are given in your notes, but I wanted to show you where these graphs actually come from and how they relate to the unit circle. So here is a unit circle. I only have these four points uh, labeled. These correspond with these values that I made in this table. So theta is your angle, and I'm going to eventually find cosine and sine, and these are going to be the y values I'll have here. I'm going to grab those off this unit circle. So when I'm at zero degrees, zero degrees is right here. Remember that your x value is your cosine and your y value is a sine. So when I put my values on this table here, I'm going to get them directly from the unit circle and here is each. So for instance, when I'm at zero degrees, zero is right there. and the cosine is always going to be the first number that you see in the unit circle, and sine is always the second number. So I would put a 1 here and a 0 here for sine. Then I'm going to go up to this point. This point is at 90 degrees. That would be the pi over 2. That's this one. The first coordinate is cosine, so I'm going to put 0 right here, and a 1 over here on this side. Next, when I come to pi, the x value, the cosine value is negative 1, y value is 0. Then I do 3 pi over 2 down here, cosine 0, and the sine value is negative 1. And then you're going to come back to here again and we get 1 and 0 again because 0 is the same thing as 2 pi. That's 0 and 360 degrees, so that's all the way around. And if I keep going around, it's just going to repeat the same pattern all over again. I'm going to have the same exact values. So this is going to continue. This pattern just continues forever. 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. Starts all over again and keeps on going. Now that I have each of these, this is how I'm going to do the graph. I'm going to draw the sine and the cosine graph separately. First, let's start with the cosine since that's the first one we have here. So if I want to do y equal cosine theta, then what I do is I'm going to put down on, along here, this is the, where I'm going to put my thetas. So I have, these are, my, these are considered key points. I have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. These, so all the values on here, they appear here on my x-axis. Okay, and this is really my thetas that I have going along here. Uh, I'm going to plot, here's 1, and here's negative 1 on my graph. So when I am at zero degrees I get one. I'm using this column right now. So zero one would be right here. Then at pi over two it goes down to zero. At pi I'm at negative one. So here's pi on the graph negative one. Three pi over two zero and then two pi I go back up here to one. So this would have done this would be one cycle of your cosine graph. Now, and if you notice in the notes, I do have it going this direction. And so, again, it's going to keep on going that way forever, and it's going to go this way forever. So I'm going to put little arrows on here to indicate that it does go in both directions. This would be the graph of, of cosine. And so I also want to do the one down here for sine theta as well, so you can see that graph. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put the same values I had before, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. These are the same values again. Here's the 0 down there. And I'm going to grab the values off of this column. So when I'm at 0, I'm at 0. Then when I'm at pi over 2, the next value is 1. That's this one. I keep on going. Pi, at pi I'm at 0, at 3 pi over 2 I'm at negative 1, so negative 1 is going to be down here, here's 1 and here's negative 1, down here, and then finally it goes back up to 2 pi again and back at 0, so here is what one cycle of the sine graph is going to look like, it looks just like this. So uh, we notice these are the two graphs and again all the values we have here they all come up directly from uh, the unit circle. What we also notice about this is, let's suppose I were to take this down to the x-axis 
in the notes I have I have the graph going again this direction of course you can keep on going as far as you want notice I have this piece it goes up it goes down and I have a zero this one goes up goes down and zero they look the same it's the same shape so therefore there actually is a way that the cosine graph could resemble a sine graph and what we notice about that is the the sine graph down here is shifted over to the left in amount of pi over 2. Now earlier in a previous section, if you watched the video for it, there was a identity we talked about before that says that your, uh, your sine graph is the same thing, sine theta is the same thing as cosine of 90 minus theta, and that was one of the, those complementary angle theorems we talked about before. This says that the sine graph is exactly the same as a cosine graph, and I have this happening, a theta minus 90. That actually ends up turning into a shift of 90 degrees. So that's how this um, property is related to these graphs here. The sine graph is exactly the same as the cosine graph, except the cosine is shifted over by 90, or in our case, it's going to be uh, pi over 2. So that's how those two things are going to be related. Okay, also we have a couple other definitions here too. The amount of time that it takes for a cycle to repeat, that's called a period. So in, inst in other words, from here to here, this is one, considered one period. It's how long it takes the cycle to repeat. So if I start up here, I go down, I go up again, that right there, that's considered a, a period. That's one cycle going through there. Okay, now I could either do uh, hill to hill or I could do valley to valley. It doesn't really matter down here if I continue it down there. As long as I'm taking one piece of the graph like that, I have it right here where your period is going to be considered, again, uh, just one cycle. So the amount of time it takes to cycle to repeat. Another one I have, a definition, is I have amplitude. So amplitude would be this height here. It's the height from the x-axis to either the top or the bottom of the graph. It should always be the same because the center line is going to run in between. So this distance right here or that distance, that's considered your amplitude. And we're going to look at that you'll be able to get these directly from the formulas themselves. And so that's what we'll look at next.